After years of planning and promises, the African Football League is finally underway. The FIFA-backed initiative is a pan-African competition that matches teams from multiple nations and is a new direct competitor to the existing CAF Champions League. But the tournament is not quite as imagined. It's drawn critics and provoked controversy, and its development has not been short of surprises. The AFL was created by FIFA with the Confederation of African Football. The aim is for it to eventually become the region's premier competition, although CAF President Patrice Motsepi says it is not a replacement for the CAF Champions League or the Confederation Cup, the equivalent of the Europa League. There were 60,000 fans at the Benjamin Macapa Stadium in Tanzania in late October to watch Tanzanian side Simba SC draw 2-2 with Egyptian champions and Champions League holders al Ahly in the competition's opening game. And the origins of the AFL can be traced to November 2019, when Gianni Infantino travelled to the Democratic Republic of Congo to celebrate the 80th birthday of Tupisson Bazambe, one of the biggest clubs in Africa. During his visit, Infantino gave a speech outlining his long-term plans for African football, which included improving refereeing standards, infrastructure and the level of competition. We have to take the 20 best African clubs and put them in an African league. Such a league could make at least $200 million in revenue, which would put it among the top 10 in the world. At the time, Ahmed Ahmed was the CAF president. He was replaced permanently in March 2021 by Mutsepi, and a few months after the South African businessman's appointment, plans for the African Super League, which it was initially called, were approved at an executive board meeting in Morocco. In August 2022, Motsepe outlined CAF's plans. The competition would involve 24 teams from 16 countries, spread across Africa. The teams would be split into three regional groups, North, Central West and South East, with each group comprising eight clubs that would play each other home and away. There would be 197 matches overall and it was due to launch in August 2023 and finish the following May. The total prize pot on offer was $100 million, with the winners set to receive $11.6 million, big sums compared to those typically offered on the continent. Senegal only received $5 million for winning the Africa Cup of Nations in 2022, and Al Ahly earned $4 million for lifting the Champions League trophy earlier this year. CAF pledged all 54 member associations would receive $1 million per year to put towards youth development programs and upgrading infrastructure. However, early in 2023, the competition's name was changed to the African Football League, but without an update on the status of the competition. In July, CAF held a general assembly in the Ivory Coast, where Infantino announced the AFL would take place between October and November, but as a straight knockout and with only eight clubs taking part. All the matches, including the final in November, would be played across two legs. However, there are plans to fully launch it with 24 teams next season. Al Ahly, Tipi Mazembe, Tunisia's Esperance de Tunis and Moroccan champions Wida Casablanca entered this year's competition, along with Nigeria's Enyimba, Atletico Petrolis de Luanda from Angola, Tanzania's Simba and Mamelodi Sundowns, who've won the South African League six times in a row. Sundowns are owned by Motsepi. His son, Tihopi, became the chairman after Motsepi stepped down to take the CAF presidency. The prize money has been reduced and the winners are now set to receive $4 million while the runners-up take 2.5 million. The losing semi-finalists will take 1.7 million each and quarter-finalists $900,000. Now, a disagreement between CAF and B in sports has undercut many of Infantino's claims about this being the biggest and best tournament in Africa. In September, CAF accused B in of owing the Federation money. The broadcaster says it's been trying to engage with CAF over rebates for the COVID-19 related pause of football on the continent. But on the day the tournament started, BN announced it would be showing matches in 24 countries across the Middle East and North Africa. Supersport, a South Africa-based sports broadcaster popular in sub-Saharan Africa, has not appeared interested in picking up the new tournament. And some games are free to watch via YouTube, with French and English commentary. And the sponsorship situation has not been easy either. When the reduced former AFL was announced, there were no sponsors named. A week before the competition started, CAF announced Visit Saudi as its main sponsor. The other is Visit Rwanda, whose name will appear on all club shirts apart from Tipi Mazembe, who refused due to the tense geopolitical situation between Rwanda and DR Congo. And the relationship between the AFL and the Champions League is also complicated. 
The Champions League takes place every season. For the 22-23 edition, 58 teams from 46 different member associations took part in the qualifying rounds and 16 teams were involved in the group stages. The 12 highest ranked member associations in CAF's five-year ranking system are allowed to enter two teams. Football fans, players and coaches are in broad agreement that the current format of the CAF Champions League is imperfect, with travel costs and other logistical issues causing great strain on clubs. Motsepi has insisted the CAF Champions League and Confederations Cup are safe, but he gave a warning before the AFL's opening match, saying that we also have to get to a point where we restructure some of our tournaments to ensure they live up to our expectations. And Gianni Infantino remains a factor in African football too. He took a prominent role in the celebrations at the 2021 AFCON final and has been close to Mazzeppi, one of his strongest allies in FIFA's political sphere. The sponsorship links make the AFL look more like a FIFA Infantino-backed tournament than a CAF-backed one. Infantino has described it as a world first and a game changer, and it is seen as a project he's using to secure his legacy. But there's little evidence so far that the tournament will improve things for the top 5% of clubs in the continent let alone the 95% below. Imagine that you could learn everything that you need to know about football news in 10 minutes without having to read anything. Well, that's why we made The Daily Football Briefing Show. It's a new 10-minute podcast that catches you up on all the football news, plus what's on TV that night. Published every weekday, it's The Daily Football Briefing Show. Check the link below to subscribe for free now, wherever you get your podcasts.